Sali wanani bantu bago bulawayo and welcome to another episode of On the Mic, a podcast brought to you by the Girls Table. I'm your host, Louise Mwate. This podcast seeks to capture the voices of young people from various suburbs in Bulawayo and their thoughts on different electoral processes and to also encourage other women to register to go and vote. Today, I would like to talk about the inclusivity of electoral processes for people living with disabilities. In the past years, we've seen that despite having developed technologically, we have left the people living with disabilities behind in more ways than one. When it comes to registering to vote and taking part in the act of voting itself, they are unable to freely do it, and this may be due to the location of the polling stations, the accessibility of ballot papers, and or lack of adequate assistance during the process. With me today, on the mic, is a young lady who I have the privilege to discuss this issue with. I will let her introduce herself. Uh, my name is Trua Fentlaufo. I'm a student at NAFT. Primrose, welcome to the show. In your community, are there any people, women in particular, who are living with a disability? If there is, what challenges have you noted that they go through on a daily basis that may hinder or affect them when registering to vote or taking part in electoral processes. I come from Blawayo, a luxury to Mleo, luxury as a Mudwanke culture park. And where I come from in my community, we have people living with disabilities. And we do have women who are living with disabilities. We do have mothers who are living with a disability. And as a person or as a young woman, as a young lady who is living with disabilities, there are challenges that we face or there are challenges that other women also who are living with disabilities face. And then these challenges might affect them when they are going to register to vote or when they are taking part <coughs> in electoral, electoral processes as Kangele if someone is going to register to vote especially like this I'm a registration stations at the doors now everyone is supposed to go a sec let us look it, it transportation to go that side. For example, if that woman is using a wheelchair, the only assistance you would take a toilet, a transport, a toilet, a motor, as an handisa, and Another challenge is the accessibility to information. There is a lot of information that is going around on social media or amongst the community but not every woman with a disability has got that uh, is the access to that information so these are the challenges that they face the other challenges is that whenever the one goes to register for those who have got a disability hearing impairment, there is no translator. It's either that person is supposed to bring their own translator. In this cutness name, Baluchwanabantu Ababe Bees, Abangavumu Hambalu, Abangavumu Peneze, Umuyazelento Yake Wells, Basomelu Meneze, Kaitem Koneza Inele, so Hambala, the blind. I will apply on. Uh, uh, a station up where we register to vote. That means they have to depend on someone to read for them because the information or the papers they are not written in prayer. So these are the challenges that may hinder or affect people living with disabilities when they are supposed to register to vote. It has been noted in the past years that electoral processes, in particular voter registration, 
is extremely difficult for people who are differently abled. How do you think ZEC has catered for this class of people for this year's voter registration exercise? I feel as if ZEC has not catered for this class of people for this year's voter re registration exercise. Why do I say so? Because I still think the infrastructures are not friendly. If one has to go a ZEC, it is to register. A ZEC, the infrastructure, I allow a moon to who uses a wheelchair. I will arrange to put him to a wheelchair. And I can't so again. I can't so make it any someone. A thing main power who is him again. And then says I can't get up with. So I pass the professor my polling stations in my own way to put him to a one so register to the Lankin. Or a go community of Salakon, a go white lap or Salakon. For those, because we all know in Zimbabwe or just worldwide, we've got different types of disabilities. We only we do not only have the physically handicapped, we've got the physically handicapped, we've got the hearing impairment, we've got the blind. So now, if you are looking at disability, you are looking at all these classes of people. Now, for the hearing payment, the deaf, now they have a to register. There's no interpreter. As long as you are interpreting, you will be able to do it. You will be able to interpret. But you will be able to interpret it and you so that they are able to communicate. And how would you feel as a person to feel in that way? Now, if you come to the person, you will be able to do it. For the blind, there is no prayer. Nothing is recorded or written in prayer. That means if there is any information or any paperwork or any document that they need to read, they have to depend on a second person to do that. And how would you feel, John? Now I can just learn since we are registered. Since we are saying everyone has got the right to vote, how is my right as a disabled person to vote being exercised? Because they are challenges or there are some things that will hinder me to vote. What other or what improvements should ZEC make in the future to make voter registration more inclusive for people who are differently abled? Improvements that can be done by ZEC at their offices or at a polling station like Kalebe Kangeli in infrastructure before anything else. Can a person who is using a wheelchair, can a person who is using a crash, um, do hamba ne walka, a kwani sa yin utenge ni lap, a hamba fira, a tolu sizo la kwafuna yin. So they have to make sure that it's the infrastructure disability friend, and they have to try with it at every polling at every station, kuvelo mundo who can be an interpreter. Well, I'm wondering if someone who has got a hearing impairment, someone who's deaf, and a boy, a one who says that, not to go to Mundo or deaf, not to go to Hamba, at the sex stations, a great thing, a Mundo and Penny is in the Hamba. And they also have to include with all their paperwork, all their documents, they need to be written in Braille also so that those who are blind are also included. And then another thing is if there are any announcements that are being made, especially now I want to report that the panels in Jean, the motors hambay, when I get to the motor, um the kuluma and a loudspeaker so that everyone can hear. But they forget that not everyone, oh yes, we've got the deaf is in Jean, Slabo Mama who are deaf. Maybe she lends in while it's the announcing this card regarding the election. But now you will interpret where the moon to come up on a thing. Again, it's that you are information a card. So it is to me this thing is considered. And as of now, whenever they're passing out information, information now maybe they make sure which everyone is able to get that information. Whether or deaf, whether or got a ear or have a wheelchair, whether or deaf, whether or blind, now information a pass by we are aware of this or it's all. How can able-bodied people help differently able-bodied people? 
to be a part of electoral processes. The able-bodied uh, people can help those who are differently able-bodied to be part of um, electoral processes to include them. To be inclusive, according to every electoral processes, it is not uh, disabled. They have to be inclusive. It includes us, include us with our uh, uniqueness. Know those who are make sure that there is someone on a physical disability, there is someone who is deaf, there is someone who is blind. So you can see that one. And um, we have a lot of people is to pass or share information that they get. Because in most cases, those who are able-bodied, they are the ones who really get more information. They are the ones who get more information uh, than people who are physically handicapped. Information is very late to those who are living with disabilities. So it will be best if other able bodies, whatever information they get, they need to share it with people who are physically handicapped. And in most cases, uh, the airport they just need to be there, even if they need to offer their help, but they have to be there to include people living with disabilities. For the women out there who still haven't registered to vote as a result of their condition, what would you like to say to them as a word of encouragement? Um, Disability does not mean inability. And I don't go into for the woman out there who still haven't registered so hard as a result of being disabled. You would say being disabled is not the end of the world. Being disabled does not mean you're excluded in the decision making. Being disabled does not mean you're excluded to vote. Being disabled does not mean you're voiceless. But it means that now as a woman, now as a disabled young woman, as a disabled woman, it's a right to have your vote. Now you are not vote. Now you matter. Now you are included with decision making. So, woman, as a woman, panel, some men are registered. So in turn we would let us exercise our rights. It does make a change. Thank you so much, Primrose, for your input on the issue. Hopefully, Zeke can take the improvements you mentioned into consideration. And maybe in the future we can all digitally take part in electoral processes, leaving no one behind. If you still haven't registered to vote, you can still do so at any ZEC district and provincial offices. Remember to carry your ID or passport and proof of residency. For more information, do follow us on our social media handles on Anchor at The Girls Table, on Facebook at The Girls Table, on Twitter at Table underscore Girls, and on Instagram at The Dot Girls Table. Until next time, my name is Louisa Marte and this has been On The Mic, a podcast brought to you by The Girls Table. Remember, your vote is your voice.